Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to another episode of an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, we did unfortunately lose Clownfish to the Scorpion's poison, and the battle left so many of our tri-mates on both sides of the line distraught. Comet's family is deep in mourning now. Aqua is just about to let out her own song. And unfortunately, it looks like the clown koi that she was watching before has passed away too. That is some awfully odd timing. I wonder if it's because we've actually been presented with an opportunity to maybe set his remains to rest? In fact, I wonder if even somebody from the other side of the family is going to cross over to help them finish the job. Alara has skittered away after all. She's basically abandoned her entire family in her search for glory. The very same glory that she assumes her mother wanted for them. Part of me assumes that she probably thinks Pernille is going to follow her. She remembers how envious her little sister was of her back in the day, when they were both very, very young. So she figures she's going to stay like that shadow before, crawl right behind her and hopefully help her on this mission. But Pernille isn't so sure anymore. She's found different ways out here, and I think for now, she's probably going to make it her mission to keep an eye on Acadian. She knows that if they just waltz right in with their prisoner of war, that's probably not going to go too well for them. Laloon is probably worried that they would end up just outright attacking them, seeking their revenge just like the Bone Keeper would. So for now, let's have Acadian retreat. We'll have Pernille push him away back toward the nest, and these two will stay here for the time being. Maybe even over by the fruits. Yeah, you know, Pernille, you never did get the chance to sit high on top of that throne, did you? I remember so long ago you wanted to be just like your sister. You actually cleared out one of the stumps that we had way over here by the safe haven, but you were never able to let out your own war cries. Now I would imagine if she lets out any songs, it's going to be very, very different. But let's make sure that Acadian is following you, too. Gosh, do you think maybe he could pick off an extra snack for you? I mean, I can't imagine that he would be feeling too generous right now. Surely even he wouldn't go after the bunny. There's no berries for him to pick either. Alright, big guy. I guess we'll just have you stay here, then. You can go ahead and claw at the weeds. As Pernille watches from her throne. She's probably rather disappointed in you, actually. Can you blame him, though? Why on earth would he want to help you after everything you've done? So tonight you can let out your songs, Pernille, but I'd imagine they're probably feeling very hollow. It doesn't fill you with the joy and the confidence that you assumed it would before. It doesn't feel like much of a victory at all. So Pernille definitely has a lot to think about in the turns that come. For now, though, let's go back to Comet's family. I think maybe it's time that we finally let them mourn, too. While Aqua is going to be singing high atop the stump today, maybe we could have Kit come over here to pick up the remains of this clownfish. Or the clown koi, I always get those two words confused. While I do assume there probably is a connection between them, this is just the clown koi. So go ahead and collect that fish for us. We'll have Aqua sing her songs. And we'll have Jericho stay very protectively over the remains of his brother. He's probably still worried that those scorpions are going to come back, of course. Not that he's very wrong. Are you tracking Alara, Mr. Bluebird? Mm, our deities are not very happy with you, but I can't say I'm surprised. Let's have her creep on the outskirts. Right past the fish. Ah, that could be a good way for you to survive. Since you don't have the comfort and the help of your family anymore, let's have you go ahead and dip that bear Yina claw in to grab some of those extra fish. It's a good way to show that you're truly on your own now. Of course, I'm sure that Addie would finally hear those songs that Aqua sang. She would finally know what the problem is. She would finally know that Clownfish has passed. So we'll have to leave the baby in Mars's capable paws now, but I'm sure he doesn't mind. He has been awaiting eagerly for this moment after all, the moment where he's finally become a father. And it's so fitting too, I know I mentioned it in the last episode, but Vixa here actually has the very same pattern color that he carries on his fur, so it's almost like she's truly meant to be his daughter. Well, Adeline, let's have you climb down from the stump and make your way over to your friend's side. She's definitely going to need somebody to help comfort her now. You are probably just kicking yourself for being so far away, though you know that she would never want you to be in danger either. You had something very, very important to give her family. Mars, let's have you go ahead and pick up the extra acorns, since now you have an extra mouth to feed, too. 
and I guess we're going to have to leave Addie right there with her extra turn. It doesn't look like there's too much else that she can do around here. So before we go back to our wanderers over here, let's go ahead and have Stone start moving forward too. Stone and Laloon, the two who are going to try to heal this tragic moment. Now I'm sure that Jericho would not trust them one bit. The moment that these two strangers slide into the clearing, he is going to be on full guard. Oh, I just realized though. Would Jericho remember Stone? I mean, all that spying that he did when he was very, very young. When he first crept over to the Bone Keeper's clearing. Oh, wait a second. Did he ever spy on you? I mean, at the very least, I think he did hear his war cries. After they had killed the killer bear Yina over by this palm tree, I know that Stone let out a few cries of victory to show that they were successful. Wasn't that what helped him find his way there? Oh, it's all so vague now, but I'm sure that there must be some very, very small recollection there. Some very, very small spark. So all the more reason for Jericho to truly not trust these two. He's not sure that he wants them hanging around. So the only way that I could see him gaining just a sliver of Jericho's trust is if Stone actually puts to rest the remains of his brother in the way that only he can. Since the rest of Jericho's family has been struggling so much, it's going to be up to Stone to dig a proper grave. I wonder if this would even be his way of protecting Clownfish? Protecting him from the wrath of the Bone Keeper. I mean, if Nicole is out there collecting the remains of the forgotten creatures in our tribe. I wonder if by setting his remains to rest properly, kind of like in Adam's quest in a way, maybe that's a way of protecting his spirit. I suppose it would make sense that Stone would understand this too, since Nicole was his lost love. So maybe they could have some sort of conversation about that overnight, some way to explain what caused this tragedy in the first place. And meanwhile, the loon back there, she looks so much like Jericho, it's kind of crazy. We can't forget that Jericho was once a spy, though. So he has to be thinking that there's always the possibility that these two could be lying to him. For now, we'll have the loon go ahead and paw at the ground, too. Maybe she's trying her best to help as well. Even though she doesn't have her father's powers, she can still try her hardest to help them along. It kind of makes you wonder, too. If when Laloon grows, assuming that she is accepted into their folds, I wonder if she could actually aid Morgana and Awkward out here as they try their hardest to actually start a healthy family together. Right now, their only clue is this termite hill they found, and is unfortunately very, very much in the red. To us, that usually means that a bad omen is coming their way, but it seems like they've had enough bad omens to last a lifetime. I wonder if maybe it would help us if we actually get rid of this red termite hill? What if one of our creatures cracked it open and then waited for it to grow back? Waited for the termites to rebuild it again and hopefully in the green this time? That would mean good things coming your way, right? So, in order for this to work properly, we need to be very, very careful. We already know that we don't want Morganate to knock it down, because that would unfortunately give her the termites all over her fur. We can't lick a creature who has a spiky body either. That would just be inviting tragedy. Now, as much as I know that Awkward would probably want to help in this case, unfortunately, he is a little bit too weak. He can't even take down a bunny in one swipe, so I can't imagine that he would be able to take down the termites either. In fact, our only saving grace might actually be you, Longshot. If you're brave enough, maybe you could help these two by knocking down these termite hills. He's definitely strong enough, so no worries there. Morgana promises that she'll be able to help you too. She does know a thing or two about picking pesky parasites off a of fur, so you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So Longshot, go ahead and knock down that termite hill for us. That means all of those nasty red termites are crawling all over you right now. But if we have Morgana go ahead and lick them off on this turn, then you won't be taking any damage tomorrow. And then it looks like you guys could actually rest for a little while too. The bunnies actually haven't gotten to these berries, so you can have a nice refreshing taste of berry juice before the day is done. We'll have you guys go ahead and clear out the grasses as well just to hopefully prepare for the inevitable day when this is rebuilt. It looks like that grass is probably going to grow back over this termite hill as well, 
so that means it's always going to be shrouded in a little bit of mystery. That makes sense, though. If this was some sort of test from Mist, then she wouldn't want to make it too easy for you guys. So we should be ready to skip the day now. I'm always a little bit leery, though. We haven't actually seen too many Baryinas spawn recently. We just have that one killer Baryina way off in the grasses, way over by the safe haven that Acadian once called home. So let's go ahead and sniff around. The only red silhouette I see are those termite hills, of course. Oh, it looks like you actually had one back here, too? Oh, Lara. That doesn't bode very well for your story. Though it does look like the bluebird has stopped watching her now. That means she can finally sneak around in peace. Well, Alara, let's have you skitter on over here so you have a little bit of easier access to the rest of these fish. Gotta make sure that you have some proper resources stocked up. Who knows how long this mission is going to take. Oh my gosh, how perfect is that? It looks like the remains of Clownfish have actually disappeared on this turn too. So that means Stone has actually completed his job. That means Clownfish should be safe from the Bonekeeper's army. We won't have to worry about him being turned into a killer Baryina. But Jericho is still very, very rightfully wary. In fact, I wonder if you would whisper to Aqua over here to make sure that the baby is kept safe. He hasn't even gotten the chance to see his very first daughter yet either. Should we change her gems over to her father's colors? Oh, what should it be? Should it be Jericho's combination? Should it be Mars? Since Mars is the one taking care of her, he would probably have the most influence. So I guess for now, we'll go ahead and change her very first gem over to that red color. Maybe in the future, she'll take on one of Jericho's colors too. But above all else, Jericho wants to make sure that their youngish tribe mates aren't going to fall victim to the scorpions. So maybe he would ask that Adeline and Aqua take her to some safe, secluded place. Hide her away in the grasses somewhere, so no harm will ever befall her. And I suppose that Aqua can't really refuse. We'll have her step down from her stump, and we'll have Addy follow right behind her as always. We'll take her as far into the grasses as we possibly can. It's going to take a while because she is very, very young. But at least we know that Mars is going to keep their stock full. He's going to make sure that they have plenty of acorns to last them a lifetime. Addy, maybe you should actually go ahead and destroy this nest for us? Kind of like destroying the evidence, I guess. That way nobody will think this is a nursery of any sort. But she can't really destroy the healing fruit. And I wonder if instead that's what Alara is going to look for. After all, she knows very, very well of that age-old tradition. She was the one who was kind of chewed out for accidentally destroying one of those healing fruits. So if she wanted to find the youngest tribe mates, she would probably purposefully look for these healing fruits and search the area nearby. Oh no, but we don't want to leave little Kit on her own either. You know, I still think that she would absolutely adore Stone, considering that he can actually dig up all that mud that she loved before, but she's probably so scared to get so close again. I mean, considering what happened when she tried to make friends with the loon, I'm not sure that she would be so willing to try again. It's just so strange to think that our excitable, friendly little mud puppy could actually be putting up barriers right now. She was always looking for new friends. Do you think maybe she would still extend her paw? Still crawl over here? To bask in the mud? To give her just one more chance? I mean, that would sure put things in perspective for the loon, wouldn't it? This creature who she's taken so much away from still actually wants to be her friend? That is one twist that she did not see coming. Kit has a very, very big heart, though. A very generous heart and one that's even likely to get into more trouble in the future. So Jericho is going to have to keep a pretty close eye on her too. I think for now, we'll have him come on over here to the stump. Since his sister isn't here anymore, he knows he has to keep watch. In fact, maybe now is a good time to let out your own strong crime to show that your family has not been defeated. If those scorpions are still lurking out there somewhere, let them know that even if they come back, you are going to take care of them once and for all. You are not afraid of them anymore. The Bone Keeper and her entire army could knock on his door and he wouldn't even flinch. He is going to keep his family safe no matter what. 
That's the sort of resolve that Clownfish showed after all. That's the sort of resolve that Clownfish has even passed into his own heart. So, we'll leave you right there, Lilern. You can go ahead and play with Kit for a little while. And I suppose we'll go straight back to Pernil on top of her stump. I wonder if she would have heard those cries too. They're pretty far away and I still don't see those Dodomingos that we heard the other day. Not a single one, in fact. I mean, do you think the Dodomingos are actually back here with the Killer Bear Yina? Oh my gosh. Do you think they're trying to lead us over here? Like, to take care of the Bone Keeper once and for all. Do you think that's meant to be, like, the final battle? Taking down yet another Killer Bear Yina, but one who is very clearly connected to that red-eyed beast. It is an interesting thought. But for now, Perniel, I know you're just trying to find that spark again. Why is it that no matter how much you cry out on the stump, no matter how much you sing, it still doesn't make you feel strong like your sister? It must be incredibly frustrating. And now Akkadian can see that even you have your weaknesses. Do you think he also shares that kind-hearted way, just like his sister? I mean, he must, considering how self-sacrificing he was before. Willing to charge off into the darkness all on his own. With his Bergina following him, of course. But he never assumed that his Bergina was going to follow him all the way to the tree. Maybe he would actually look out for some food for her to eat. I wonder if he would even claw down the sperry bush? It will grow back after all, since it is one of the normal ones. But that gives them a nice big harvest to eat. Maybe that's a little trick that he learned in his own. I wonder if that's something that he picked up while he was traveling. A good way to pack plenty of nutrients into one fell swipe, since we don't actually have any bunnies hopping around here anymore. It's definitely something that she could learn from too. And you know what, Acadian? Let's have you sneak back here. While I know that you're still terrified of that beast in the darkness, and who knows if she ended up following you too. Maybe he's feeling a little bit braver than before, and he wants to find a little bit more food for them to eat, too. Now, I'm sure that that trauma heal hasn't grown back yet, yet still far, far too soon. So it seems like you guys are actually going to have to make a little camp here. Hello, bunnies. How have you bunnies actually not stolen every last one of these berries yet? Did you really leave a little extra one for us? I mean, that was very, very kind of you. Oh, and look at this. We actually have a stump out here. Oh, awkward. This would be the perfect way to get Miss attention. What if we have you coming over here for now? Oh my gosh, with a nest right next to it. Wait a second. It's only too bad that we don't have a healing fruit over here. It seems like that's the one thing that we're missing. I mean, do you think that Morgana would still want to carry out that tradition? since she knows it doesn't really work anymore, but she also knows that their shell tradition was very, very misguided too. I don't know, maybe she would be willing to try again over here, as long as that termite hill turns green next time. To her, I guess that would be the ultimate sign. The ultimate sign that Mist is actually watching out for them. I feel like she must have been this entire time, but something is clearly holding her back. Something is causing it so she can't keep these babies safe anymore, and it must be Nicole's influence. Maybe they'll never get the chance to have a healthy family together as long as the Bone Keeper is still around. I wonder if she's actually the one leeching their babies' lives away? Like using them for her own nefarious purposes, if she is truly turning those remains into killer bergenas for her army. Very interesting, if not slightly dark thought for her lore, but that makes her kind of the opposing force to Mist then. Mist protects the new life, and if new life is unfortunately taken away, she brings dream babies to give the families comfort. And meanwhile, Nicole is using those lost spirits for her own gain, throwing a wrench into the cycle of rebirth even. There is so much potential for new stories with her involved, and I think that's what has me so excited about her. But let's go ahead and skip the day. With Laloon still playing with Kit in the Mud, we'll have her stay right there, and we'll zoom out to make sure that no danger is going to come crawling out of the grasses. Oh, that did not sound good. How many bunnies just fell to the claws of Baryinas in the darkness? 
Oh my gosh. No, was it this the terrible omen? Oh my gosh, awkward, you just can't catch a break. That's a killer bergina, isn't it? Oh my goodness, another one of the Bone Keeper's army? Well, now it seems like that theory definitely has to be true. No dream babies for you, but clearly Nicole has taken her chance to swoop in. Oh, this is terrible, right by the nest as well. Awkward. How are we going to defend this space? This might be Morgana's only chance, the only chance for your family to thrive. And here you are being thwarted again by powers out of your control. Oh, he knew better than to trust the deities. How are you going to worm your way out of this one? It's not as though anybody here is strong enough to even take on a killer Bergina. They're going to have to run back, I guess. They're going to have to stumble their way back through the grasses, come out to Comet's family, and hopefully find somebody to back them up. Jericho only has a four in strength. I mean, Kit has a five. She would definitely be able to do some form of damage. It won't be much, though. And Stone is so close to the end of his life, I'm not sure if he would have it in him for another Killer Baryena attack. He only managed to take that other one down because it had positioned itself right beneath one of those coconut trees anyways. He was very, very lucky. I guess that means he would have a little bit of experience to lend. And for that matter, he did know the Bone Keeper personally, so maybe he would be able to figure out some of her strategies. <laughs> Dazzle Lara watches on from the background. Oh, you know that she is going to get involved too. You know she is going to be trailing right in their shadow to see this red-eyed beast herself. I wonder if she's even going to take this as her next moment to strike. I guess we'll find out in the next episode. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.